Hey guys, this is going to be my second video on polymers, uh, specifically addition polymerization. If you haven't already, please check out my first video all about condensation polymeration, as it gives you, in the first couple of slides, an introduction to what monomers and polymers actually are, and some of the concepts we based on that. So just to remind you, what are the two different types? Well, we have step growth, also known as condensation polymerization. It's called condensation because it's the, it has the elimination of a small molecule, such as water or HCl. It's named after the poly and then the bond or linkage, such as polyesters, polyamides, and polyurethanes. But now what we're going to talk about today is addition. And they utilize alkenes, so specifically the C to C double bond. They are named after poly and then monomer. So, we have polystyrene, where the monomer is styrene. We have polyethene, where the monomer is ethene, and polypropene, where the monomer in this case would be propene. But <clears throat> let's actually look at the monomer. Well, there are several different monomers out there, but they all should have this C to C alkene bond here. And these are known as vinyl monomers, and vinyl monomers are just a different way of saying alkene monomers. So when R is H, we have ethene. When R is CH3, we have butene. When R is CH3, CH2, we have uh, prop one -ene, so propene. And then when R is a benzene ring, also known as a phenol ring or pH, then we have styrene. And that's where polystyrene comes from. So they're just a few examples of some of the monomers involved. But how does it actually work? Well, first of all, there's the initiation stage. It's started by a radical, and I'll show you later on how that works. I'll take you through each step one at a time. Then there's propagation, it means the polymer chain starts to grow and it creates that long, long strand or ball, depending on the conditions that we require. And then there's termination, that's when the polymer chain will stop growing. <clears throat> I've done these in a traffic light kind of way, so green initiation is the start, propagation is orange, so it's kind of continue, but it will come to an end soon, and then termination, the end point is in red. First of all, what's initiation? Well, initiation <clears throat> is when you have an initiator, in this case I've called it I2, it's not iodine, the I stands for an initiator. So I2 is broken up by heat or light into two lots of initiator radical, so we form two radicals, and this is what starts the reaction. So an example, you won't need to know this, but this, this is an example of a peroxide. We add heat or light, so H nu for light, or we can have heat, <clears throat> and this will break the peroxide bond and form a radical. So two of these here with a radical being emphasized on that oxygen. And that radical then can then start the reaction. So what we ha have is we have this <clears throat> radical, I radical, plus a monomer can go to I monomer and the radical is put onto the monomer. So the chain can then continue growing. That IM radical can then react with another monomer and the radical will then go onto that new monomer and it will continue growing a step at the time, which is sometimes why it's known as step growth. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the mechanism for initiation. Again, you won't really have to know this, but it's just to emphasize the points that I've been making. So we have this radical here, one electron moves to make a bond, one electron from this alkene C to C bond forms a double bond, uh, forms two electrons to make a bond, and then we have an electron moving to there to form that radical. Next one is propagation. Well, propagation is where we have this IM formed, IM radical, as before, and then it can do pretty much the same reaction and form the polymer, right? So if we have one more monomer, it will react with it and put a radical onto here, right here. And then if we add lots more monomer, keep adding, keep adding, it will grow and the chain will progressively get longer and longer and longer and we'll still have this radical at the end. 
But one key thing is, how do we show this? Well, it's the same as before in the condensation polymerization. We just use the repeat unit. There are a couple of different ways to show this. We can use the um, skeletal formula as such, where we can see from this monomer here, we have a repeat unit that looks a bit like this. N times, and that's just what's displayed down here. Alternatively, you can write it like this, whichever is easiest, both are correct, where you've got the carbons that were originally on this C to C bond like that, there and there, and then we have hydrogen, R group, hydrogen, and hydrogen like that. That's what the monomer would be, and it's gone on to react to form this polymer. Key point to highlight is these brackets must be through the bond to show you where it would connect. You can't have the brackets out here, that would be wrong. You can't have the brackets going through atoms like that, that would also be wrong. You need to have them going through the bond that then connects to the next bit. And please try to not miss out carbons. So some people will sometimes miss out carbons, so they'll draw it the first one there and then the second one here. They've missed out that carbon there, so it's that would be wrong. That's one key thing to point out. Okay, so now we've gone through initiation and propagation. The final step is termination. Well, there are three different ways to do that. First of all, the initiator radicals, like I said, not iodine, initiator radicals, could combine together to form the original compound put in that formed these initiator radicals. Second one is the polymers. Do you remember we had the a polymer that looked a bit like this? We had an initiator and then our group on there and a radical at the end here. Well, these two can come together, this radical on the end of the polymer, it come together and join these two polymer chains together. So for example, we could have squiggly line, radical, radical, squiggly line, and we could have electrons move in as such, single headed arrow because they're radicals. And then we have squiggly line, bond, squiggly line, like that. That's effectively what it's showing. It's just making a double length polymer as such. And the third and final way is the polymer could terminate by reacting with the initiator radical. So we would form, well, taking this example back here, we have initiator radical, one electron moves in from there, one electron moves in from there. Then we have something that looks a bit like this, you know, where we have that repeat unit in there n times. Like I said, uh, in my first video, these brackets like this, you can use square brackets if you want, both are absolutely fine to use. So that's the end of addition polarization. There isn't a huge amount to know for uh, some A-level courses, specifically the OCR exam board. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please share it with your friends. They might find it beneficial as well. Subscribe for more and like the video. Thank you for watching.